The rabbi has stated that Birkat HaMazon is a mitzvah of paramount importance. Why is this so? The first fact to mention in this regard is simply that of all the barachoth, the many barachoth and tefiloth that we say on a regular basis, only one, namely Birkat HaMazon, is a baracha which has its explicit uh, source uh, in the Torah itself. After all, it says in the Torah, in Sefer Devarim, uh, speaking about having entered the land of Israel, Eretz Yisrael, and you shall eat and uh, be satisfied by the, the plenty that you will find there in Eretz Yisrael, and you shall uh, bless and thank Hashem uh, for the uh, very good and uh, fertile land that he has given you. So states the Pasuk in the Torah, and this is the basis for Bikat Amazon. This being the case, every time a person uh, recites Bikat Amazon, he or she is performing a Mithwa Minha Torah. This cannot be said for any other uh, bracha or tefillah that we, that we recite, with the possible exception of uh, Kriyat Shema, which is, first of all, not a bracha, the actual parshiot, the sections from the Torah that we recite uh, during Kriyat Shema, uh, are not themselves barachot, but rather sections from the Torah itself. They're not considered a tefillah, a prayer. They are rather a uh, fixed uh, daily form of uh, Tamud Torah, of studying the Torah, of reciting words of Torah that every Jew is required to say and to do. And I say with the possible exception of Kriyat Shema, because even with regards to that, there is uh, no unanimous agreement amongst the, not, not amongst Chazal and not amongst the Rishonim, uh, whether Kriyat Shema is Mina Torah, whether it is ordained explicitly by the Torah, or whether it is essentially Miswa uh, Medivre Sofarim, enacted by the Chachamim, by the sages. Whereas with regards to Bikat Amazon, there is no such discussion. Bikat Amazon is clearly, unequivocally Mina Torah. Having said that, if we look around, uh, honestly, uh, at what uh, we see going around on around us, and if you look at ourselves in the mirror, so to speak, uh, most of us will admit and recognize that most of us do not uh, recite Bikat Amazon uh, in a fitting manner. It is very often uh, recited very quickly, uh, very often it is mumbled by people the words are not recited clearly and properly as they must be, as they should be, according to Halakha. Many people uh, recite Birkat Amazon by heart, which uh, in and of itself is no crime at all, uh, not in the least bit reprehensible. But it is a fact, on the other hand, that for most people, uh, if they recite Birkat Amazon from a uh, written text which is before them, uh, this is likely to increase their kawanath haliv, their focus, their um, purity of, of uh, intention and thought as they recite Birkat HaMazon. And this, uh, this is exactly why, uh, or this is the reason that, uh, the reasoning behind that which I once heard on a radio program many years ago, where some uh, Haredi uh, Avrechim, yeshiva students, were, were uh, relating their, their experiences, uh, meeting certain uh, Chachamim Gedolim, very great Tamide uh, Chachamim, great rabbis. And one of them related how uh, he and a few of his friends, when they were young Avrechim in their early 20s, they once went to meet uh, Hagaon Rav Shach Zetzal in Bnei Barak. And their intention was uh, to ask him for specific suggestions, recommendations 
uh, particular um, actions or ways of doing things that he recommended to improve their Abudat Hashem, their uh, worship of and service of Hashem and their connection to Hashem, to strengthen their connection to Hashem. And this Avrech related uh, that he was rather surprised uh, to hear Rav Shach say to them, one of the central uh, recommendations that he made to them was to recite Birkat Amazon always from a written text, not to recite it by heart. And initially, he said, this statement seemed very uh, unusual, very strange to him. After all, that was not what he had, uh, was not that kind of statement that he had come to hear. He was expecting to hear some very deep and profound uh, explanation or statement or, or uh, an entire dissertation perhaps on different aspects of the Torah that he had not understood before, uh, which would uh, hopefully uh, open up new vistas before him. But instead what he heard from Rav Shach was, when you say Bikat Amazon, which is something that uh, most of us do uh, at least once a day, usually more than that. Um, do it from a Sidur, say it from a Birkon, do not say it Baalpe, by heart. However, he went on to relate, the more he thought about it, and having also uh, taken Rav Shach at his word, and having uh, implemented this, this suggestion of Rav Shach's, uh, in his own life, after a short period of time, he began to see the great wisdom and uh, the great impact this had on him. He said, as he began to recite uh, Birkat Amazon uh, deliberately from a Sidur or a, another written text rather than by heart, he realized, he saw that he recited it more slowly, that he thought more about what he was saying, and he realized that which Rav Shach had not actually said to him, but was clearly uh, in between the lines, so to speak, of what Rav Shach said to him, namely that Birkat HaMazon is a very uh, central and uh, particularly uh, important part of, of the daily uh, Jewish life, existence, practice, Abodat Hashem, of, of a Jew. Because Bikat Amazon is not just thanking Hashem for the food that we find ourselves blessed with, it's also that of course in the first place, that goes without saying. But in fact Bikat Amazon, which as we said is a great mithwa explicitly mentioned in the Torah, the way it was instituted and formulated by Hazal Birkat HaMazon is, is in fact a microcosm of the entire Torah. Because in the first bracha we thank Hashem for sustenance, for our food. In the second bracha, which is also considered to be Minat Torah, because the, the pasuk that we mentioned speaks about thanking Hashem for the land. So therefore Hazal understood that we have to mention uh, Eretz Yisrael in Birkat HaMazon, whereas you could have thought, perhaps, that it would be sufficient to thank Hashem for the food that you ate, particularly if you live in, in Germany or Sweden or Timbuktu, and uh, has nothing to do with Eretz Yisrael. The food that you ate wasn't grown there, probably. And uh, what possible connection could there be to Eretz Yisrael, therefore? So why is it such an important uh, and uh, central part of Bikat Amazon that you mention Eretz Yisrael? One of the reasons is because Eretz Yisrael is central to the entire Torah none of the Torah uh, would have been given to, to us uh, had we not been removed from Mitzrayim, from Egypt, which in many Nusha'ot of Birkat Amazon we also mention in that second Baracha, in order to be brought uh, to arrive in Eretz Yisrael and there to uh, live according to the Torah and to accept Hashem's uh, divinity and kingship uh, in a complete and total fashion. That is the basic uh, thrust of the entire Torah. We mention, therefore, Eretz Yisrael, the beginning of that Baracha. We also mention uh, the Torah, 
that we received after leaving uh, Misraim. We also mention the Berith Milah, which is an essential part of receiving the Torah, because uh, a person who is uh, not circumcised is not Ra'ui, is not worthy to uh, study the Torah in its entirety, in partic with particular reference to the Torah Shabbat Al-Peh, the oral tradition, which, without which one cannot really understand the Torah. Uh, we also go on to mention in, in the Torah, the, in the Bikath uh, Amazon, rather, we mention the, the various aspects of the Torah, the Hukim, which is a reference more to the Torah Shabbat uh, these are all essential parts uh, of, the, of, our, of who we are, of our, our identity, of what the Torah is all about, and, and why uh, and uh, through what uh, means we have this special connection to Hashem. In the third baracha, which essentially was also the last baracha of Bikat Amazon, because the, the fourth baracha was a later addition, which is something we can discuss on another occasion. The third baracha, Rahim, uh, is also speaking about something which is absolutely fundamental and uh, crucial that every Jew understands, that he reminds himself of, this, of these facts on a daily basis, just as he eats on a daily basis. Namely the fact that uh, if we are in Galuth in the exile in Chutz Laaretz, then we must remind ourselves that we're not in Eretz Yisrael. And if we are, even if we are in Eretz Yisrael, we must remind ourselves if the Migdash is not built, if there is no Malchuth Beth Dawid, if the, we, haven't, uh, we have not yet succeeded in constituting or reconstituting our national sovereign existence in Eretz Yisrael under the uh, auspices of a properly constituted uh, Torah-based form of government, of governance and governing, governing institutions and uh, rules and uh, accepted practices. If we haven't yet achieved these things and there is no mikdash, etc., then uh, huge aspects of our Jewish existence remain, uh, as it were, desolate, remain without, uh, without the proper form and content that, that we are supposed to experience on a, on a daily basis. And if a Jew uh, is living in a time, as we are today, where not all of these things, uh, by any means, are in place, then we have to be uh, reminded of that constantly. And we have to uh, think about, about these things on a, on a, regular, on a very regular basis. The Ya'bes, uh, Rabbi Ya'akov Emdin, one of the uh, greatest hachamim, to have ever lived in my estimation, in his uh, Sidur, called uh, by some uh, Beth, uh, Beth Yaakov, uh, Sidur of Rabbi Yaakov Emden, when speaking about Bikat Amazon, he mentions the following. In, um, in all the Nusha of Bikat Amazon, the second bracha begins with thanking Hashem for uh, Eretz Israel. And again, this is something which uh, uh, if we think about it, is not self-evident and uh, even a bit strange perhaps. If we think about all the generations of Jews who lived outside of Eretz Yisrael, who never experienced or saw Eretz Yisrael, let alone live there on a permanent basis, uh, they would mention this fact daily in, the, in Birkat Amazon. This obviously uh, suggests and uh, in fact uh, forces us to recognize that Eretz Yisrael is a central uh, part and the in, in fact the the, uh, the the spine as it were the backbone on which all of the Torah is built and uh, the Yabez writes as follows we begin with the bracha by mentioning Eretz Yisrael and then we speak about leaving Mitzrayim and we speak about Berith uh, and we speak about Torah according to Menus Haoth and while Torah uh, Tachash and Imad Tanu, and other, other Nushaoth just say Berith with Torah, either way we mention these concepts. Now, if we think about the chronological order of, of these events, says the Abbas, uh, it seems that this Bracha is uh, mentioning these things in the wrong order because we did not first arrive in Eretz Yisrael and then um, receive 
uh, the Miswa of Barith, Barith Mila, and then received the, the Torah, etc. And in fact, it was the reverse. First, we left Mitzrayim with the express purpose and aim of, being, of coming to Eretz Yisrael. That was the entire purpose of living Mitzrayim. And as Yabez yeah, here points out, uh, if that was not the case, that the reason for leaving Mitzrayim, for all the events of uh, Yisiat Mitzrayim, of the Exodus, if, if the reason for all of that was not to bring us to Eretz Yisrael, then we could have remained in Egypt. If the purpose was to free us from slavery, from bondage, that could easily have been achieved, says the Abbas. He could have, Hashem could have um, done away with the Egyptians in whatever manner he chose. He could have brought about a plague uh, which affected only the Egyptians and not the Jews, for example. The Jews could have inherited all of Eretz Mitzrayim, which was at that time uh, the greatest empire the world had ever known, uh, extremely wealthy and powerful. Uh, the Nile, of course, was uh, the source of the great uh, fertility of uh, the banks of the river Nile all, all, uh, all along its length throughout Egypt. Egypt was the breadbasket of, uh, of, of many parts of the world at that time. Uh, the Jews could have inherited Eretz Mitzrayim, the Egyptians could have been done away with in one manner or another, and uh, we could have received the Torah there and then, and that could have been the end of the, uh, of the story, so to speak. But that was, of course, not the plan. We were supposed to inherit uh, Eretz Yisrael particularly, and that is the reason we left Mitzrayim, which, of course, had been promised already to Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, to our forefathers. And we were to receive the Torah, and implement and live according to that Torah in Eretz Yisrael. This is uh, the essential uh, concept and uh, the idea on which the entire Torah is predicated. Therefore, the Abetz says, why is it, he asks, why is it that the Bracha first mentions Eretz Yisrael, which should have been mentioned at the end. It should have first said, you took us out of Mitzrayim and you gave us uh, Brit Milah. Now, Brit Milah was also given to Abraham Avinu, true. But uh, it was, uh, it had to be reinstituted and uh, renewed, as it were, uh, before uh, the, the Korban Pesach in, in Mitzrayim, the first uh, Pesach sacrifice. And again, before we entered Eretz Yisrael, Yoshua was commanded to circumcise the people because they had not been circumcised in the desert. So the order should have been uh, leaving Mitzrayim, Berit Mila and Torah, and, uh, and, and then Eretz Yisrael, but that is not the case. Eretz Yisrael is mentioned first. So the Abetz says, he says, Nahalat ha'ares kadama bivhinat ha'takhlith, seeing that the entire purpose of leaving Mitzrayim, receiving the Torah and, the, and, and Brit Milah, etc., is so that we come to Eretz Yisrael and receive uh, and implement all of these things and live according to this in Eretz Yisrael, according to Hashem's will, to be a mamlechith, that is only possible, obviously, in Eretz Yisrael. As the Pasuk says explicitly in Shemot, where Hashem says to the people, In other words, I will take you out of Mitzrayim for the purpose of uh, coming to Eretz Yisrael. So therefore, the essential uh, purpose and aim of, this, of all these events was for the Jewish people to arrive in Eretz Yisrael with the Torah. And therefore, uh, seeing that this was the, the aim, the final aim, it was mentioned at the beginning because this is the thing on which everything rests. As he writes, the, uh, uh, the Abbas goes on to say, Receiving Eretz Yisrael is, uh, is a condition, an essential condition in uh, fully receiving and understanding and accepting and internalizing Hashem's uh, divinity and kingship and uh, rule over the world and over us, the Jewish people, and our special connection to him. Without Eretz Yisrael, none of that is truly possible. That is why Hashem is referred to in Sefer Melachim as Elohei Ha'ares. Hashem is referred to as the, the God of the land because there is a particular connection between those who reside in the land and, and Hashem. So we talk about all these things, we mention all these things, in Birkat Amazon on a regular basis. And then we go on to mention also uh, Yerushalayim and Malchut Beth Dawid, which refers again to a, a Torah-based form of uh, 
government and national sovereign existence in Eretz Yisrael, and we, refer, and we speak about the Mikdash, which is missing. All these things are the absolute uh, essentials, fundamentals of Torah Judaism. And therefore, every time we say Bikat Hamazon, we are in fact uh, reciting a summary of everything that, all the essential elements of the Torah and everything that is important and central to our lives and our existence. And therefore, Chazal, as we mentioned in another Shi'ur, Chazal instituted Mai Maharonim before Brikat Hamazon as a way to prepare for this very important miswa. And uh, there are also other things that we can discuss on, on another occasion regarding Brikat Hamazon, such as the concept of Zimun, of when three people say Bikat Hamazon together and how exactly this was supp is supposed to be done. For now, suffice it to say that whenever a person, whether he's a part of a group or by himself, says Bikat Hamazon, he is uh, connecting to Hashem, communing with Hashem, and he is uh, reminding himself and those perhaps who are hearing him of uh, what we, the Jewish people and the Torah, are all about. And therefore it has to be said and recited uh, with great uh, seriousness, with kavanat halev, bechoved rosh, not something to be said quickly or lightly, not to be taken lightly, not to be recited uh, as quickly as possible. Quite the opposite. It is something to be said very slowly, very deliberately, word by word. The production of these videos and maintaining this channel demands much time and money. If you enjoyed this video, please show your appreciation and support. To make a donation, please go to www.machonshilo.org and press the PayPal button which appears on the upper right hand side of the home page. To sponsor a video or purchase Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, please write us at office at machonshilo.org.